Would this homebrew rule on initiating combat be balanced? Very often my party comes up with interesting traps and ways to initiate combat. The problem is that in 5th edition, once the combat is initiated, everyone rolls initiative and the combat goes from there. Specifically, my issue happens when an entire group surprises the other. Here's an example. The party is all hidden in the shadows. Three ogres lurk in the campfire in front, and have not noticed the PCs. The plan is simple. Wizard opens the combat with fairy fire, and all the marshals will have advantage on their attacks. A single round, at most two, should be enough to wipe these ogres. What actually happens depends on initiative, everyone rolls initiative, wizard is last. Ogres are surprised. Rogue and fighter either move in to attack without advantage, and are possibly hit by fairy fire, already a single attack for after the wizard has cast his spell. Ogres do nothing, since surprised. Wizard is last, and when fairy fire is actually cast, the damage output of this surprise attack is sub-par. If wizard came first on initiative, the whole plan would be perfect. The worst part of this is that there isn't even a justification for this happening this way. On a standoff, initiative represents reflexes, and it works well. But here, it doesn't seem to make sense that, if all players are waiting for the wizard to do something, that they will be hindered, no multi-attack, no off-hand attack, etc. if, for some reason, the wizard rolls low. Narratively, they could just go, hang on, seems like the wizard is distracted, let's remain hidden, and re-roll initiative. Initiative is an abstract concept, and during the actual combat, I'm fine with how it works, just not for this combat initiation against a surprised group. My homebrew rule. When a group attacks a surprised group of enemies, everyone rolls initiative as normal. For the first round only, the attacking group selects an initiator to act before the highest initiative attacker, initiating combat. This initiator will not act in its actual initiative position on the first round, but will do so on following rounds. Example, Ogres have initiative 25, 20 and 15. Wizard has 5, Rogue has 17, Fighter has 22. With this rule, Ogre acts first, does nothing due to surprise, stops being surprised. Wizards is next, acting as combat initiator for the party, playing before the Fighter in this round. Fighter is next, then Ogre, surprised, Rogue, and Ogre, surprised. In the following round, the order is Ogre, Fighter, Ogre, Rogue, Ogre, and finally the Wizard. It is a simple change. The group initiating combat, because they have the upper edge and time to prepare, chooses a person to go first in the first round. After that, everything else is exactly as before. If it happened that this person actually had the highest initiative check, nothing would be different from normal. Thoughts on this rule? Would it imbalance things, or can it be taken advantage of somehow? I think it is a decent way to join narration, planning, and mechanic execution. It helps those parties relying on assassin rogues or on AOE initiators. Hashtag I would like to offer a different perspective hash. Initiative says, at the beginning of every combat, you roll initiative by making a dexterity check. Initiative determines the order of creatures turns in combat, as described in chapter 9. Why can't the beginning of the combat be when the wizard finishes casting fairy fire? Even the example of surprise says, a gelatinous cube glides down a dungeon passage, unnoticed by the adventurers until the cube engulfs one of them. In these situations, one side of the battle gains surprise over the other. A cube engulfing a player is one of the cube's attacks so that it has taken its turn before combat and initiated the battle. Here's an example of why I prefer this reading of these rules. The party is hidden, player 1 declares, I attack the ogre with my bow. If I make them roll initiative before rolling the attack how do the ogres know what's going on? If the party spends their entire turn holding actions and the ogres aren't surprised anymore it doesn't make much sense. Or, if they spend an arbitrary amount of turns doing nothing the ogres aren't surprised despite nothing changing. The only time I see intent being a trigger for initiative is if you were face to face with an enemy not expecting your attack, but that isn't the situation we're talking about. The problem with reading the rule this way is that it works both ways. If you abuse monsters getting huge attacks in before initiative they might resent you for it. Springing combat on my players has gone fine for me with reactions ranging from damn it to oh god, but the shock of sudden combat is fun if used sparingly. I personally think adding more rules to the game is going to bog down combat, especially if the players can't just open the book and read the rule. When hacking new rules into the game one try to keep them as light as possible so that if my players ask me something it's one or two sentences and the rest is in the book where they can look it up. 
Also as pointed out by other answers this rule has some strange interactions with one round long effects either by extending them or shortening them. 